Thank you, Clark, for that beautiful <laughs> anthem, that <laughs> message of hope. He's before us last Sunday. We spent some time thinking about how life was a tough run, a tough competition at times, but how we reminded of how we do have that reward of being with Christ our King. Soon and very soon. Some of us don't want to be too soon, but we do like to look forward to that time, surely, in our lives. Today our focus is on healing, and we find our first text becoming is in 2 Kings, actually chapter 5, instead of chapter 6 is listed there, verses 1 through 14. We find here Naaman coming, seeking to be healed of leprosy, and then in Mark's gospel we find a person coming to Jesus to be healed of leprosy. So we'll begin there with the account of Naaman. 2 Kings 5, verses 1 through 14. Now, Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram, and he was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now, bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria. He would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. And the king said, By all means, go. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten pallets of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. Well, as soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. So when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why are you? Why have you torn your robes? Have the man, have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his forces and chariots and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and far, far the rivers of Damascus better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Please accept now a gift from your servant. And then in Mark's Gospel, we found the account of Jesus and a man with leprosy here on the back of your worship bulletin you may have called. Beginning in verse 40, a man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man, and he says, I am willing, he said. Be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. And as a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stay aside, outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 